East Coast fever is very important in this region, in the East and Central Africa region, to show how serious this disease is. It can kill up to 100% if there are particularly improved animals. It is estimated like about a million cattle die of this disease every year in this region. In situations where farmers keep one or two animals, it can completely wipe their livelihoods. In the more extensive farming systems, like the pastoral systems, we find lives of keepers lose like up to a half of the, the calf population. Even the animals that survive from the disease, they are affected for life. Because of these cancer-like effects, the animals do not grow as well as they could. They don't produce as much milk. So they are long-term effects. Only two years ago, it was first reported in um, the Comoro Islands for the first time. So it's the 12th country in this region. Recently, it's been moving very rapidly to the north of South Sudan. And now it is in the province neighboring Ethiopia. And there is no reason why it cannot cross into that country. On the western side, it's moved to the states bordering Central African Republic and there is no reason why it can't cross to that country as well. South Sudan and Central African Republic are going through some kind of civil war. I think East Coast fever would have a hugely devastating effect to the livelihoods of all those people if it entered into those countries. It's a very effective vaccine and at the moment it's the only means we have to prevent the devastation from this disease. And even though it costs eight, twelve dollars, there is a huge demand from all types of livestock keepers, both the smallholders and the nomadic pastoral livestock keepers. So it's been very popular amongst the, the Maasai's uh, who have bought close to 600,000 doses over the last several years.